Tin Cup Kelly here, and in this series of flickers, we're going to explore many of the places to see and things to do in the magnificent Yukon Territory and along other parts of the Klondike Corridor. I'll show you the wonder and intrigue of these sites and establishments today, but also tell you what such things were like in my time. Tinkup Kelly here uh, again, and we're at this here park that tells you all about the Klondike Gold Rush. And so this here, display, what? and we got a, a Mountie here um, with us. Well, well, he ain't no Mountie. It's uh, Kevin the the Ranger and a Tin Cup. Kevin, it's nice to meet you. darn good to meet you. And tell us where we are and, and what we're doing. Uh, here, uh, well, you don't know what we're doing, but you tell us where we are, will you? So you're in the National Park right now, Klondike Gold Rush National Historical Park in Skagway, Alaska, where we share the landscapes, the artifacts, and the stories of the people that went up in 1897, 1898 as part of the Klondike Gold Rush. Well, and that's, of course, as you all know, that's right up my alley, and I get to relive some of the memories of actually being there, because Kevin, uh, and I, uh, I hope you ain't uh, one of these uh, fellows that's uh, weak of heart because uh, I got to tell you that I'm a time traveler. So, so I see here what I like about this one, Kevin, uh, this little um, exhibit uh, that you got here, as you call it. Hey, so <laughs> if you get this slide here, so he says, what did one ounce of gold buy in 1897? And uh, this one makes me thirsty. 400 glasses of beer uh, that, um, and 10 pairs of ladies' shoes. And that could get you some dates, I suppose, right, Kevin? And then two and a half weeks of pay for a factory worker. That's, uh, that's hard work. And 300 pieces of candy just for, just for one single ounce of gold. Good order for the most part. There were still fellows like, uh, what's that? Uh, I met this fellow when I was here in Skagway. I believe his name was um, Dishwater Smith. Soapy Smith. Soapy Smith, that's that fellow. He was, a, <laughs> he was quite a, quite a uh, conniver, wasn't he? He was a representative of the type of people that you would sometimes get in these uh, frontier towns that were based around silver mines or gold mines and gold rushes. So you'd have people that want to take advantage of those gold rushes and earn money apart from having to actually do mining. And sometimes those means in which they tried to get money without mining were fairly nefarious means. And certainly there's some example of that with uh, Soapy Smith and his operations here in Skagway. Any woman that got up here and then even further up to Dawson City, <laughs> they were uh, not to be tussled with. They were, uh, they were strong. So, Kevin, uh, tell, us, tell us more about, uh, you know, what, what, how you put this together. Sure. And, you know, the great thing about a museum like this is we don't have to find a seat on your time machine to actually learn the story and to live the adventure. That's why we're here, to transport people back and have them experience what you experience with a little less, you know, difficulties than you probably had in person. Oh, let me tell you. The trail. <laughs> so the idea is 
for people to know what you went through, you know, to know that, you know, this was a difficult journey, but also to know that, you know, in spite of its difficulties, there was, you know, something to it. There was something lifelong that many of these adventurers got out of their journey. They might not have gotten gold out of the ground in a Klondike, but they had an experience that shaped their lives. And one of the long lasting impressions of this gold rush is this gold rush helped the country and the world recover from a Great Depression in the 1890s that was caused by a lack of gold. Well, I, I, I felt that. But Kevin, I, I must say, if I was a, if it was a fellow that cried more easily, you would have just brought me to tears <laughs> because uh, it, it just does my heart good and it'll just uh, send me sore in that uh, I know will be remembered. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I know that this uh, this history, and, and many, lost many a, a friend back then on, uh, on, on my journeys. And to know that um, in, in a hundred years or so, there's people like Kevin that are remembering this and are making sure everybody else remembers it. And like you said, and that's what Kevin said, and I, I like that, that this is reducing the effort of time traveling. These folks who come here and see these nice exhibits, you got, uh, you know, pictures and, and uh, what you call artifacts yeah. here. And, uh, and around the corner, we'll go around the corner and they got um, flickers that give you a sense of the river. This is getting folks back in time. And, uh, and how great is that? for you all to paint this picture. This is just part of the beginning of your journey up the Klondike Corridor. And that's one of the wonderful things for us being park rangers, whether it's at Klondike Seattle or here in Klondike in Skagway, is that we are part of an international park. We are part of a park that deals with history into Whitehorse and history into Dawson City. So this is a international story and not many of the stories that we preserve as part of the Park Service are international stories. And, uh, and that's, and I love that it is like that. And uh, you know, and, and we, kind of brings us together a bit, doesn't it?